Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Castlevania Lords of Shadow. Uh, I probably would have figured this out on my own eventually, but I just went back and looked up a walkthrough as I'm one to do, and hey, you just need to take this with you. Like, we just got the stake that lets us use this, so... Or lets us use some of these things, but... I don't know. Kind of weird, you know? I had the right-ish idea. I need your help with the crowbar, Zobek. That's a good idea. Go through to the other side, quickly! Do you, does he need to be here? Like, considering how sluggishly this thing seems to move, I would imagine that you could probably like cut through it pretty quickly, right? Is that it? I guess the other one was pretty simple too, but geez, guys. It's not that fantastic of a, uh, of a puzzle. Yeah, let me get some slurp. Now let's party. It's funny every time. The fact that they were just like, yeah, we'll just have it float. Like, he's not even throwing them. They're just getting sucked into the holes. A little silly looking. New haircut, you know? They are establishing the hell out of this courtyard. Oh, and the hell gate, you know. You know how it is. This is, this is maybe like a toxic trait of mine or something, but I absolutely love saying you know how it is when, when, when someone would have no concept of how it is, you know? Uh, that cursed abbot, a man of God, using hellish magic. Uh, this device and the portal keep sending me back. That keep sending me back are connected, but I can't figure out how. Like, at one point I hit myself in the leg with an axe. And I was like, just hit myself in the leg with an axe, lol. And they were like, are you okay? And they were, and I was like, well, you know how it is. Like, they wouldn't. They would never know how it is. Getting hit with an axe is a pretty rare uh, injury even 100 years ago. Even 200 years ago. Now it's unheard of. Uh, I heard Gandolfi one of the search of the vampire that took his daughter. This is what motivated him to create the combat cross and its upgrade relics in the first place. A little silly to call them upgrade relics just straight up. Passed a mausoleum earlier that could have housed one of the cross upgrades, but the weapon itself is in the secret underground vaults of the Brotherhood. The relic has no purpose of value for me. I wonder if we'll ever see it used in combat. I wonder if the prophecy will ever come to pass. Or if we'll ever discover what happened to Gandalfi. I like how these are all different parts. I wonder what else could go on here. God, this game has so much good polish. The next game honestly could have been like a level pack, you know? It is a magic seal created by the abbot. There must be a way to manipulate okay. it. There must be a way to manipulate it, says Belmondo. I, I, in the very, very early Castlevanias, they sometimes refer to him as Belmondo, like Simon Belmondo. Oops. Is it this? No. How about this? What if I go through wall on blue? It is a magic seed created by the Abbot. There must be a way to manipulate. What is the way? Alright, just peep my walkthrough. Peeped. Hmm. Camera is oppressive sometimes. Oh. I see a cracked wall. Okay, big steak. The wooden kind, not the delicious kind, I assume.
Oh god, let go. Oh, and we got ghouls? Why are you laughing at me? I'm bothering my wife while she does her homework. I gotta say, the little, like... The spinny thing is, is very silly. Like, th this, is a, this is a common thing while, like, having a whip-type weapon. I think it's, like... There's this awesome move that you do in God of War 4 where, like... Kratos holds the, the Blade of Chaos above his head, spoilers, um, and like spins it around really quickly, and like it looks like he's doing like a wet t-shirt contest thing, and I think about that like often. Oh, he's got like weird jaws, like a predator. Don't you dare touch me. <laughs> um... And I, I often think about that when looking at any whip type weapon, especially when like you hold it really close and spin it really fast. Okay, so now what? Oh, now is probably the time to spin this because I didn't get the chance. Oh. Now Zobek. You to hold the device steady, Use your old man body to soak up all of the all of the damage. Don't you dare touch Dude, me. not cool. The grab seems to be an instant kill on them, which is pretty sweet, but the grab takes a pretty like longish time. I wonder if you could do a system where like the quicker you uh, the quicker you kill them or like the more damage they do Zobek, or like the, the more damage you do to them the quicker the grab comes idea. out Go that could be kind of interesting side, okay hey, it worked cool that's kind of neat life gem Okay. Ah, ledges. Wait, hold on. Am I done in here? It would make sense if I'm done in here. I'll send you straight back to hell. Especially because Patty Stew isn't helping. This is one of those things where, like, I almost wish I didn't know it. But, like, you know, like a Star Wars? Uh, in the Star Wars canon the planet that Obi-Wan is from, even though he has, like, the British accent that a lot of people from Coruscant have. Uh, the planet he's from is canonically not Coruscant. And when asked about it by a comedian and, uh... A long gone. Uh, comedian and, and, and newsman John Stewart, George Lucas said that he's from planet Stu John. Which is maybe, like, the dumbest and bravest thing I've ever heard anyone do. Like, you talk about a line of sight name, like, you're talking to Jon Stewart. I need you to hold the device steady, Zobek. As you wish. And he asks what planet Obi-Wan is from. Go, go! Cross over now! And he's like, oh, he's from Stu, John. Oh, of course. It would have worked better with any other name, like, maybe literally any other name. Like, if it was me, it'd be like, Kimal or Sulal, you know? That would be a million times less done. I think of that sometimes when I call him Paddy Stew. Uh, I must be out of my mind. How else would I have accepted a mission like this? Infiltrating the Abbey alone to recover a mysterious relic? Insane. This place is full of fiendish traps and indescribable monsters, intent on sucking the life from me. Damn, they got a number. You know, it's very nice. You might think that I might be annoyed by it, but I'm not at all. 
it's very nice to let's play when my wife is in the room because whenever I say something insane and she laughs, it's nice to confirm that I'm not, at least I'm not alone in my madness. There's at least one other person who's... Let's be polite here. Uh, unusual enough to find the stupid things that I say funny, besides me. No, Gabriel. This feels much faster. I don't know if it is, but like... Look, man, sometimes whipping a guy just isn't that... It, it isn't it, you know? That's one thing that's a problem, because like, whips are like... Whips are serious business, you know? Like, hey, you'll fuck a guy up with a whip. But like, in a, in, in a thing where like, people are wearing armor and stuff... Oh, it only, it only goes this way, so I gotta go the long way around. Zobek, hold the device steady. I'm coming. Chosen one. Go coming. through to the other side, quickly. Yeah. Well done. Sometimes I look at how these puzzles, like, apparently are so hard to solve that the Brotherhood Knights couldn't figure it out, and I, I just feel bad for the Brotherhood. Like, I don't trust Zobek, and I don't know if I trust Gabriel either, and they're the only two people who are anywhere near competent. And Patrick Stewart can only kill people if it's a cutscene. You know, like, Patrick Stewart's ability to fight these guys is pretty pathetic, I would say. You know? Oh, cool. Damn, I got some money. I got some cash money dollars. Okay. I'm getting a lot of use out of that. Oh yeah, I'm not even using the somersault that much. I'll grab this because I am using it. It just adds another hit, that's fine. Fine by me. And then I can bank the rest. The traps laid by the abbot have proved Again, I'm thinking about the mounts in this game, and like, the mounts do so little. Like, they're just a weird way to... Is close at hand, if memory serves. ...to just have something to do, you know? Looks weary and troubled. The weight of the world I don't on his always shoulders. like mounts in I can games, see you know? Holding a terrible secret like, sometimes, yes. It's cool to, like, hop on your, like, space motorcycle, place, or, like, a cool horse. Is taking over. We must needs of the many away the needs of the we few, you say, huh? find Dorin and take what we need before we are dragged Do they mean to have him guilt. quoting a Star Trek? The need I think of the that's many a Star Trek. outweighs those of the few now. We can shed no tears I wonder who did this in lost. Japanese. We must be I wonder if it's like anywhere near as like relevant or important. Of shadow at any cost. Okay. I gotta say, as like items go that would be cool to have in real life. Dash boots are up there. The ongoing sagas of Dristo Burden and his heavy Dristo Burden are somewhat silly, I will admit. Um, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't describe those books as literature. If those books were a movie, it'd be the kind where you go for the sake of having the popcorn, you know? Drista Worden is, is a, is a, is a, a silly book about a silly character, but it has its moments sometimes. And at one point, there's a really cool thing where Drist find these, finds these like radical, super magical gauntlets that increase his speed. Um, but like, he's already pretty fast. He's an elf and all. It's like their thing. And him putting on gauntlets that increase his speed only make him predictable. And like... When he's fighting other people who can match his speed, he needs to outthink them, and that's not really what he... Ooh, the contract fight. Are we going to get an axe armor? Oh, I love the little plume. Club. That's fine. Look for an exit. It's still Almost cool. Oh, word. Damn fucking me up. 
Okay. He said to look for an exit. Is that what I actually have to do, or should I, like... Let's use a fairy. <laughs> What's happening? What am I thinking about? Oh, yeah, I was talking... I was thinking about Dristor. Um... Which is also what I could be doing on, like, any given hour of any given day in, in college. Um, but yeah, just finds these gauntlets that increase his speed, but, like, he's already fast, and he doesn't feel the need to double down because it makes his strikes predictable. And that's interesting, because, like, it's, it's cool to see somebody deny an upgrade. Oh, their shield's grabbable. That's good. That's a problem for me. Turn my magic off. Um, so just puts the uh, these gauntlets on his feet instead. They, he puts them around his ankles and wears them like anklets. And then, like, they let him sprint faster, which is a lot more useful for him. And that's cool. Like, that's the kind of uh, uh, initiative and, like, outside-of-the-box third-option thinking that you would really expect from a D&D &D player. And, like... You know, just as a D&D book, so... It befits him. Interesting. So who are you? Animated armor. Size? Big... Uh, empty suits of armor have been given temporary life due to possession by poltergeist. Possession by poltergeist seems like it would be like a legal term in a D and D world, you know. It's probably a lot of laws around it. In fact, I would say possession would be like nine tenths of the law. Um, they serve the vampire dark lord by patrolling and protecting protecting the castle's halls and corridors. The spirit of the poltergeist can move the uh, from armor to armor, though it can take many days for the spirit to recover. Interesting. I wonder if it's like an emotion thing. Um, once established a suit within a suit of armor, the poltergeist can travel between dimensions at will, causing a huge electrical outage that signals an opening between the world and the spirit world. Our world and the spirit world. What? You can tell when an armor is possessed because strange, unearthly, reddish glow emanates from within the suit, indicating the ghostly inhabitant is awake. And presumably that your shit is wrecked. Word. Interesting that I'm not killing these guys, then. I'm just, you know, turning their swag off. Oh, man. Can you imagine if, like, okay, this this would be very stupid and dated, but fuck, I'm, let the joke happen. Imagine if, like, I guess it would work in, like, a Borderlands, like, a Saints Row, especially in a Saints Row. Um, if, like, there was a, a Saints Row game that had, like, a devil trigger, right? And let's be honest, the later Saints Row's games got really fucking stupid. Maybe that's what I'll complain about this episode. Here it is. Um, it. Oh, well, thank God that you weren't helping me or anything. It is an Get ostentatious. I'll keep the trap door open. Cool. Hmm. Yeah, four of them. I don't know if I fancy my chances. I like that he stamples on them a little bit. It's cute. Anyway, imagine if you had like a Saints Row or or Borderlands where like your devil trigger or or your like activation was like turn my swag on, you know? Like press LB to turn swag on. <laughs> that would make me laugh. Uh, the Abba was very clever, creating a puzzle based on sunlight to protect himself from vampires. The builder said the doors will react to a sunbeam, but I can't figure out how. Boy, these knights are stupid. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's... Man, what the fuck happened to Saints Row? Ooh, 
like one like one is just Grand Theft Auto. Do can I oops. One is just Grand Theft Auto, and then two is like goofy Grand Theft Auto. Where like Word. You essentially get to be like a Batman villain. Is it not in the right place? Oops, don't hold that down. I mean, I know what I probably have to do, but... Mm-hmm. Strange. Okay, so we can push it back. Is there anything else in here that I should be fiddling around with? But yeah, and then three is like even crazier. Saints Row 3. And then 4 is like, what if this was The Matrix and Independence Day? And then like in 5, like... Like... Oh, there we go. It just didn't do it last time. Did I not... That's weird. It's probably a bug. Whatever. Like, I do... I gotta say, I do uh, respect the hustle that they stuck with their decision to not undo the earth getting blown up and like it's not a spoiler that the earth gets blown up in Saints Row 4 because it happens in the first five minutes I mean it's like ten minutes but um let me see what you've got to say friend damn him the abbot has littered this place with traps uh something interesting to notice fairies can really help to distract enemies here I've been using my surprise my Supply a fairy blossom, and the wonderful creatures have been taken care of nearby enemies. I just hope I don't run out, or I'm truly done for. Oops. Uh, damn shame, friend. But yeah, I respect the hustle that they didn't decide to, like, undo the fact that Earth had been blown up in Saints Row 4. And they were like, no, yeah, that happened. That's still canon. I think that that's brave of them. But then to be like, hey, so then everyone died and they all went to hell and then you can meet people who should be dead, but they are dead. They're just in hell. And like, like, it's weird how, oh, sweet. Hell yeah. Like there was just a, a particularly goofy Saints Row uh, 3 DLC wherein you get superpowers and then they were like, oh, man, what if we made this game Crackdown now? And then, like, Saints Row 4 has to think of so many ways to give you superpowers. And then in Saints Row 5, which I think is just called uh, Gat Out of Hell. Um, like, Get Out of Hell. Or Get Out of Jail and Bat Out of Hell. Like the meatloaf. Ooh, we saw into the world. I guess it was just because it wasn't loaded yet, but now it's loaded. That's all right. Um, oh, we got demons. Or no, you're something else. You're not a demon or a vampire. I think I fought you before, though. Oh, he was just a little guy. Stake the babies. Kill them all. <laughs> Kill them all, Gabriel. I've got to say, that image of Kill Them All, Peter, is maybe the funniest thing created related to Spider-Man in the last 10 years. That's not enough. Interesting. Oh. It only goes this way. Strange. 
Then we got these. Okay, can't go down there. This is like a uh, a thing in Devil May Cry 3. I think it's a sub-mission or secret mission. I forget exactly what they're called. That's how I run. Am I... Do I dash? Do I not run? Do I dash instead? I think it's a Kratos thing to like... Instead of, um... Okay, so in here... Oh. Hello. I think it's a Kratos thing to like, instead of slowly, gradually pushing a block, to like just pound it and and send it in a direction. Oh, there's a thing here, doy. Cool. Oh no. For this, you must die. Maybe this is a weird thing to say, but I think my dad would like this game. This isn't apropos of anything, it's just I was thinking about it. There we go. Right. And now. Sorry, forgot my buttons. Maybe you can tear down this wall. Oh, yeah, I can probably. God, it, it comes out so quickly that you almost can't see it. a magic thing right out there so I'm just gonna I think I think just like annihilating him with magic is probably the go-to move it'd be kind of just I I don't know how they would do it I don't know where the buttons would go or how it would activate but it'd be kind of interesting if we could see more stuff done with magic like more than just a a, a passive buff well, not passive but you know uh, just a, a, a semi-standard buff to your whip I know that sometimes you will just like burn your your magic while doing something. Like, oh hey, you you fired your your punch gauntlet while your uh, magic was active. That means that you spent your magic and you did a really good punch. And, like that's fine, that's cool. Um, like I don't know, I do like proper casting things in Castlevania. Normally it doesn't really work out because like the game isn't built that way. But, like, I like it. I really like the, uh, I actually really like the, um, uh, the way that Alucard has, um, the way that Alucard has access to magic and sub weapons. And, like, some people barely use magic on their playthroughs. Like, Sarah barely used magic on her playthrough. Um, she basically just was using sub-weapons. And only specific sub-weapons.
Uh, but like I try to use as much magic and oh. oh, do we just need to get this out of the way? Okay, now what? Hmm. That's clever. I like that. This is a good puzzle. Although, I can see why people would have problems with it. And by people, I mean, like, in Universe Brotherhood Knights. Because it requires so many, like, items. Like, of course most people are going to be able to use this puzzle. They didn't kill a Black Knight and get the, like, magical gauntlet punch from it. Or they didn't kill the werewolf god and get the werewolf boots. Puzzle solved. I love that shitty, crappy default font. This game rocks, dude. All right, cool. Uh, what's light flash? Blocking with light magic on. You know what? I'll take that. That looks cool. I like it, and I'm trying to get better at... um. Abbey Tower. The tower at the I knew a girl named Abbey Tower. Was once a place um, where men of God I'm trying to get better at blocking because, like, every time it happens, I pop Christ's off and mark love. out. Now so you know what? I could just, I could just manufacture more hype for myself by Dorian's properly doing uh, my 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 parries and my wealth. counters. A powerful relic keeps the vampires at bay, and we must take it if we stand any chance against the Dark Lord's minions. I know of a secret way that will take Papa me to the of top Christ of the tower this time. by a different path. Gabriel will have to find his own way. Yeah, now. one of the things about um, Castlevania Classic, and by that I mean the old universe, like, not even just the classic games that are called classic vanias, or, like, the games that are, um, like, the, the Metroidvania games, is that, like, you'll get frequent mention of, of Satans and Devils, and almost no mention of God. And, like, in this, it's because God has explicitly been canceled on Twitter. Um, ooh. I've infiltrated the Abbey, but at a heavy price. Two of my brothers lie slain because of Doran's evil traps. Damn the selfish coward. The relic he possesses could save many, yet he locks it away for his own protection. Claims to be a man of God. I find it so hard to be, uh, forgive such a behavior. Uh, so many lives lost because of him. Damn his soul. Sister Laverne, Brother Bernard, I will avenge you. H. Should I know that? Laverne and Bernard. Like, when someone says Laverne, I think of Shirley immediately afterwards. I don't even know if I should. Oh, hey, guys. Yoink. They're weird little jaws. That's, uh... I like that as a detail, but, like, man, that's creepy looking. Yeah, just... Here, come over here. Let me... Let me work on you. Nice. Okay, that's cool. Though, my functionality will improve when I get my block better. Man, when they when they just turn into marinara sauce, I like I become a twelve year old every time. It's hype. It's cool. I like it. You know, like I don't know what it is, but specific use of gore in a video game, like not Outlast gore and like not Mortal Kombat gore either, because like I feel like those are two different types of of extreme gore violence. But like very specific uses of gore, like like in Doom and occasionally like in Castlevania, like get me turnt like a fucking twelve year old. Like oh shit, I'm looking at stuff I'm not supposed to look at, you know? Like this is the game your mom doesn't want you to play. It's got violence in it. 
If one's running low on magic, uh, it's important to become focused again, as this is what makes the enemy drop neutral elemental orbs. We know this. Slashing away doesn't work. One must be patient, strike the enemy and dodge, strike them and dodge. Slow and deliberate. Um, once focused, absorb the orbs into your container. This is the only way to defeat the creatures of the night. Uh, we know this, sir, but thank you. Silly boy. I hope Patrick Stewart's okay. I mean, I guess he has to be okay because he survives to write his journal, right? And that's like all in the past tense, isn't it? I'm thinking again about the, like, some of the animations that they do in the Castlevania anime produced for Netflix. And like, goddamn, some of those are so clean. Like the way that Trevor will like grab the, the, the whip midway up in order to make it bend sooner and have like a quicker impact. Or the way that he has to like pass it like across his body or like under his arm in order to get this like stupid weapon to work. Cause like, look, the whip is fine when you're fighting unarmored dudes, but it does not work on armor. It just scares people. But then when they realize that you can't get through steel, it doesn't matter. And the only reason that it's an awesome weapon in Castlevania is because it's been super blood cursed and like, it might even be a better weapon if it were a, a regular sword that happened to be super blood cursed. Um, my wife's in the room and she doesn't know why the whip uh, works like that. And I intend to play the game that reveals why that is, so I'm not going to mention why it is. But let it be known that there is a reason and it is dope as shit. Um, but like... There are so many moments in the Castlevania anime where, like, Trevor is using his body, like, almost more than he's using the whip. Like, his body is a tool that he he uses to get the whip working. Like, it, it's this weird thing where, like, you know, everyone always hears the 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 thing of like, use a weapon like it's it's an extension of your own body. But like, because the whip is so huge, like, it's such a long, massive weapon. He's doing shit where, like, whoops. Where, like, using the whip like it's an extension of his own body is not what's happening. He's using his body like, like it's an extension of the whip. And that's really cool. Where am I going from here? Like, the fact that he is the person that is using the whip is irrelevant. What's important is the whip. Which, you know, makes sense. Because, like, looking at the guys, you would imagine that Alucard would be DPS. Oh, cool. Um, Trevor would be a tank, and Sypha would be mage. But, like, because Alucard is so fucking tough thanks to all his vampiric power, um, he's really more of a tank. And Trevor is not even, like, a regular DPS. He's, like, a critical hit class. Because it's not like he can actually fight. And, like, he can, but... Uh, uh, a human can't really fight a vampire. But for uh, Trevor in particular, he's just carrying something super effective to uh, to vamps. And that's super cool. Like that, that shot in, in season one where he just like almost casually whips, whips a demon and it just explodes and starts melting and, and bursting. Oh, so good. But yeah, like... The way that Trevor fights is sometimes so, f like, fascinating. It's one of my favorite parts of the anime. Um, where, like, the only reason that Trevor stays still is because the whip requires him to stay still for this, for this next motion to work. The only reason he's moving is because, like, he needs to carry along with the whip. Like, whoops. Um... Like, some of the ways that Trevor, like, moves and, and fights and, and pulls along is, like, so awesome looking. I'm, like, straight up stuck here. I don't know what I should be doing. But, yeah, that's always been one of my favorite things about Trevor. And, like, really most Belmonts, but... Oh. Well, that's lame. Like, using a weapon not like it's an extension of your body, but using your body like like it's an extension of your weapon. Like, of everyone, Trevor maybe has the most, like, your this weapon is your life ever. 
Because, like, hey, you're just some dog shit crap human who can't fight, like, all these ancient immortal gods and monsters and stuff. But you're, you're holding, like, it's like you're holding a stick. You know, you're holding, you're holding a twig that can really, that can really fuck their ass up. And that's all you've got going for you. Like, again, maybe it's a Shadow of the Colossus thing. Oh, we got the really nice cutscene here. Damn. Oh, hey. What's up? Where's the abbot? Oh, it looks completely sane in here, guys. Damn. Is that a holy hand grenade? Come on. <laughs> Though, let me flex my history here for a second. The holy hand grenade is a real thing. It doesn't, like, explode and, and kill stuff. Um, but there's this, there's this, I think a papal artifact called, uh, I think it's a Globus Crucigier, Crucigier, um, which is just like, it's like this golden sphere with a cross on top, like Globus, like globe, like sphere, like ball, and then Crucigier, like crucifix, like cross, and it's literally just a, a golden sphere that's ornate and, and fancy and stuff, and then it has a little cross on top. And then, you know, in Monty Python and in Team Fortress 2, and I think in New Vegas, they use the same design. Um, the the holy hand grenades are just, no, it's mine. you know, a, a you World War II, uh, a World War One grenade, I think, even. Except grenades. they're made in, of gold, and the pin is, uh, is a cross. You cannot take it. You are not worthy. Don't leave me here. Dogs. See, the thing is, is that, like, yes, his stuff is crazy Curse and he's super you. weird. Damn you to hell. But he's not crazy enough, you know? <laughs> like, if he was like, blah, you're finally here at last. Somebody to help me replace my toes with grapes. Then he would be crazy and weird and, and like, fucked up enough that, it'd be, that I could write him off and be like, hey, you know what? He went nuts. Who can blame him? A priest cut off from God. He would go nuts, you know? Also, like, it's not like he wasn't justified in that. Like, the like the literal second, the minute that, that is taken out of his abbey, he is immediately jumped by vampires and not the sexy kind. It's the gross bat kind. So is this going to be like a thing charged by light magic? Oh, hello, ugly child. Please help us. What is it? What's happening? They I love how sir. much shit I'm getting on me, you know? They want you alone. You must go to the village. Or they will like, initially, all. like, already I had a pretty pimped out design with, like, the cool red armor and the skull and the black and but blue still, highlights and the knives and the go. whip. You the combat must. cross, man. It's so I'll rad. Take care of the boy. And then the little hood. And then, like, you put on the belt and you get the holy water flasks. Fuck yes. Oh, that's so cool. I, I, like, again, I love the way that they are reintroducing and reinterpreting all of the classic shit from Castlevania. God, this game's so good. Uh, it's holy water. You throw it directly downwards if you're in the air. That's nice. I like that. Especially in a 3D environment. Uh, and then it's devastating against vampires and the undead. Uh, throwing holy water with light magic on will block attacks. Oh, it just gives you a little shield. That's... that's Fucking radical. Um, so I've been recording for 40, 45 minutes. Uh, that's usually what I do uh, to cut off. So, And I'm at a really good stopping point here. So I'll probably cut it for a couple of days. Sorry to say. Um, wow. I might come back. I might come back and do these off screen. I mentioned that I, I did a few of these off screen. Like... This one, I need to go back and find this. But this is a holy water upgrade, so I couldn't have gotten it yet anyway. I think I've gotten that. Got that. Yeah, I went back and, and um, mostly 100%ed this. I just miss, I missed this magic gem. And then for all of these, I need to do the higher difficulty stuff. But um, And I haven't done much here. 
So this is 62. This is 43. This is 60. That's not bad. 33. Eh. 36. But I'm not done with it. Yeah, I've got two left. Brawner. We're going to fight a vampire named Brawner? <sighs> I'm so easy. I'm so easy. It's literally like, hey, man. Do you remember Portrait of Ruin? And I'm like, yes, I do. I do remember Portrait of Ruin. There was a guy in there named Broder. So easy, you know, like with Cornell earlier. <laughs> I do. I do remember it. <laughs> anyway, uh, I've been Alfred. This has been Castlevania Lords of Shadow. Uh, I hope you had a good time. I certainly did. Uh, I'll see you guys later. Have a good day. Bye.